Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Beyond the Payment Variance Report, How to Resolve Common Costly Underpayment Issues. On behalf of Becker's Healthcare, welcome and thank you for joining us. Before we begin, I'm gonna walk through a few quick housekeeping instructions. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can type those into the Q&A box you see on your screen. You will find a few engagement tools on your dashboard. Please check out our resources section and also make sure you fill out the session survey. We will have one poll question during today's webinar. When we get to the poll, the question will pop up in your slides box and you can submit your answer directly on the screen. We thank you in advance for your participation there. Today's session is also being recorded and that recording will be available after the event. You can use the same link you use to log into today's webinar to access that recording. Finally, if at any time you have trouble with the audio or video, please try refreshing your browser first. You can also submit any technical questions into the Q&A box. We are here to help. With that, it is my pleasure to present to introduce rather our presenters. Andrew Bess is the COO of Targeted Solutions at Ensemble Health Partners, where he oversees physician revenue cycle and all point solutions. He's a past winner of the Transformational Leadership of the Year Award at the Governor's Celebration of Innovation with the Arizona Technology Council. Andrew has also been recognized through the Young Professional Achievement Award through the University of Arizona Alumni Association. His prior company's innovation and technology were spotlighted by Verizon Wireless, VMware, Salesforce, and many Fortune 500 organizations. He will also be performing the musical Hamilton in full after the close of this webinar, so stay tuned. Lane Rosenthal is a Senior Vice President at Ensemble Health Partners and oversees revenue integrity and contract management. Lane is responsible for accounts receivable management and root cause analysis related to payer analytics, denials, underpayments, and appeals. In 2022, his team recovered more than $200 million in underpayments across more than 200 hospitals. Lane also helped design, build, and grow a comprehensive contract management system to identify and track payment discrepancies. He and his team were responsible for not only the recovery of millions in underpaid claims, but also in the resolution of facility and payer specific issues that ultimately increase downstream revenue. Now, without further ado, I will turn it over to Andrew to begin today's presentation. Andrew, over to you. Hey, thanks, Marcus. Uh, really appreciate the introduction. And maybe I should start by saying my name is Alexander Hamilton. Uh, all jokes aside, we're really excited to be with you all today to discuss how to resolve common underpayment issues, and most importantly, how to look beyond a common variance report to find and capture revenue. So you see the slide in front of you, but in today's session, we're going to cover a few things. The common challenges with underpayments, common issues on and off the variance report, and the key tips for a successful underpayment uh, recovery program. But before we get started, we'd like to start with a poll question. Do you have a dedicated underpayment recovery team? We'll give you about 20 seconds or so to uh, fill in some answers. Yep, and just to add to that, as you're answering that question, and this is Lane, uh, when we say dedicated, we really mean dedicated. So, you know, they're not, not posting cash at the end of the month. Uh, they're not working denial work queues when they get full. These are true dedicated underpayment folks. Lane, it looks like we've gotten some uh, responses in, in the chat uh, yep. function so, as well. Yep. yep, so we've gotten some, some yeses we do. We do have some no. Um, we have some people saying that the, they're having a hard time finding expertise to do it. A few talking about the technology and just not having that investment there yet. Um, limited exposure to contracts and contract complexity. A um, little bit of everything coming through here. Great. We'll give it another few seconds. Right. And there, there, there it looks like, uh, yep. Yep. You know, look, th this is this is typical. We we see this a lot, right? Uh, whether it's a lack of dedicated resources, as Lane mentioned. Uh, lack of technology or even lack of expertise. Uh, we're going to share some ways to drive results uh, and start looking deeper. But first, uh, let us tell you a little bit more about Ensemble Health Partners. 
Ensemble has a national footprint with deep experience in well over 300 hospitals around the country. We have roughly 10,000 associates and over 200 dedicated certified underpayment recovery experts. Our team of experts review and analyze over 6,000 payer contracts each year. Ensemble's national footprint also provides us the benefit of seeing a variety of regional and national payer trends that help feed our technology and experts to bring results to AMCs, critical asset hospitals, large IDNs, children's hospitals, and everything in between with various solutions from short to long range engagements. Ensemble also invests over $30 million a year into technology platform to continue to improve upon our subject matter expertise and scale our business across the healthcare industry. My co-host Lane and I have been at other organizations where there really is no dedicated team. Uh, there's budget constraints or even competing priorities. So we know all uh, too well what it's like uh, to have lack of resources and the importance of building a robust team that look beyond the variance report. Lane? Thank you, sir. So yeah, in the earlier poll, um, we did see where a lot of you mentioned that you don't have a dedicated team. And to me, that means, you know, there's possibly that you're missing between one and 3% of net revenue each year to, you know, to your commercial payers. Um, Andrew mentioned earlier, and, and I've been there as well. Uh, I've been there on the team that really didn't have that ded dedication to, you know, reviewing opportunities for, for our hospitals. Um, you know, I mentioned, are they post posting cash at the end of the month? Are they working the mile queues? I've, I've been there and I've seen that. Um, but what we found is kind of having that dedicated team that really can focus day in, day out on what payers are doing, but also what's just happening in revenue cycle, uh, extremely, extremely important. So today we're going to walk through ways to combat those challenges um, and start capturing lost revenue. Um, you know, when I say underpayments, I look at more than just your traditional underpayment, right? Um, to me, an underpayment is any opportunity within the revenue cycle to ensure you're being paid per your contract, paid optimally, and also compliantly. It really is just a holistic review from registration to final payment. Um, but first, let's talk about some of the causes of underpayments. So to me, um, there's really two things that can cause an underpayment. Uh, the payer, Obviously, payer issues can cause the underpayment. Uh, these are your true just contractual underpayments, uh, processing errors, and just those complex claims uh, that, that, are, that are causing you loss of net revenue. Um, but there's also self-inflicted wounds that cause within the revenue cycle, within the revenue cycle that, that can be preventable and fixed. So I'm talking about coding, charging, billing, a lot of things. Um, I'm not really talking about denials. And I'm not saying that your coding, charging, billing is incorrect. I'm saying that all of these functions need to be optimized for your commercial contracts and the reimbursement that you're due. Many of the barriers to resolve these causes stem from why you're on the call with us today. Lack of resources, lack of knowledge, the technology just isn't there, or you just don't have the ability to fight the volume or prioritize it. So let's, let's dig in a little bit. Oops, sorry about that. There we go. So common, there are a few common issues that are causing underpayments. And I think these are the ones that, that probably everyone is aware, aware of. And, you know, I quite honestly will show up on a variance report if you have one, if you have these. So, you know, your your basic stop loss, right? So how dollar claims are, are you being paid that stop loss or not? Are you getting your carve outs for some of your, your higher dollar services? Um, are your payers paying your escalators? Um, are you catching any just type of processing errors? Maybe they just don't have, you know, maybe payers just don't have their systems up to date. Um, are you capturing the bundling? Probably. And then just your basic payment variance, right? So, you know, you're supposed to get paid $500 and you got paid uh, $400. All those things, I think, um, are, are more or less uh, cost. But if you look at it holistically, I think there is so much more. This is everything that you could and should be capturing. Notice again that this covers two main opportunities, payer-related opportunities and revenue cycle opportunities. Um, so it's just gonna kind of go through a couple of these, you know, so again, a lot of things over here you're seeing, um, you, you may or may not be catching some of the lesser of language. Um, you may or not may not be catching the reduction of charges or interest payments. Um, charge, you know, charging, 
everything you see under the charging charge master uh, piece could impact your reimbursement. Um, you know, are you looking at those claims that are close to stop loss to see if you can add a few more dollars to that account to hit a stop loss? Are you checking um, every year, every quarter, looking for new and deleted codes? Um, are you checking your charge master and sure your charges are, are, are where they should be in regards to lesser of language? Those are all things um, that really we should um, take a look at and, and see if there's different opportunities. In coding, um, you know, are, are your DRGs being coded appropriately? Are we missing diagnosis? Um, are the orders of the, the order of the procedures on the bill correct? A lot of payers look at the order of the procedure, and it certainly impacts your reimbursement. Are you checking transfers to make sure after they are, are discharged or, or sorry transferred out of your hospital that they they really end up going uh, where, where they said they were going? That impacts your reimbursement modifiers, all those things. Um, how you're billing, um, alternate revenue revenue code logic, all your payer specific edits trailer billing, invoices, IME, um, as you guys all know, uh, revenue cycle is extremely important, or I'm sorry, uh, complex, and all of these different processes impact your bottom line. So when we think about the payment various report, right? So um, I know I, I kind of grew up in the school of you sat down and you worked payment pay various reports, but I learned really quickly that number one, uh, the variance report is only good as what you put into it. And I also learned that there's a lot on those variance reports that really don't add uh, too much too much value. So what you'll see again are your basic payment variances. We got it. Um, it's important to have this program because you, you do need to verify uh, variances. Um, but it just can't be the only thing you rely on. Um, it's important to invest in the tools uh, to maintain um, you know, your contracts and make them as accurate as possible. You know, not only is this tool important for your underpayment team, but it has many other uses inside revenue cycle and hospital finance. Um, so what you're seeing here is just, just the basics. This is what, what you're not, this is what you're seeing. And again, here's our, one of my, you know, one of my favorite terms, uh, false variances, right? So these are accounts that have a variance on it. Some, some's not right, um, but more than likely uh, gonna have zero cash value and could be such a waste of valuable resources but understand from time to time that these, these do need to be cleaned up. Okay. And here's where we get into, you know, what, what's important to these, what is not visible on your payment variance report? Um, you know, what's the point? So contract management systems will price exactly what you put into them. An incorrect bill will price the same. They're going to price exactly as you built it and as you built and build it. The system will only price what you give it. In order to go beyond the variance report, you have to move past the mindset of only variances and think holistically about revenue cycle. Think about all the steps that go into getting a final bill out the door, from registration to coding to charging to working the edits on a bill before it goes out. A good underpayment analyst and system should really understand the impacts of these processes and how they ultimately impact reimbursement. Our system at Ensemble has over 100 predefined rules from payers from all over the country and just from general revenue cycle expertise that really try to identify these examples. So let's, let's just, let's take a look at just a couple examples of going beyond the variance report. So this on the left is the first bill that ran out the door. The, on the right is a corrected claim that went out the door. So this is, uh, for example, a payer that reimburses high cost drugs at 60% of charges, but you will get zero for your standard drug. So on the left, this, this claim initially went out. And you can see the pharmacy highlighted there with a 250 revenue code for $55,000. If for this payer, you would be reimbursed absolutely zero for those drugs. And I'm not saying this was billed incorrectly yet. Uh, for that particular drug, on this example, a 250 is perfectly viable. But also, if you do the research on that drug, a 636 is perfectly viable. So by simply changing that revenue code to a 636, which again is, is, is perfectly accurate, your reimbursement goes from zero to $33,000. Yeah, 
Hey, Lane, wait, wait a sec. So you're, you're killing me here a little bit here. So you're telling me that the 250 is different from 636, but how do you keep up with all these things? Yep. Andrew, thanks for the point in question. Uh, I'll get there. Uh, but to your point, commercial payers all have different contracts. They have different terms, different reimbursement methodologies. Um, many facilities that we see have their CDMs and billing edits set up to build Medicare, which is great. That's a, a very good thing. Uh, but this does leave opportunities on the commercial side for additional reimbursement. Okay, got it. So in this particular example, you saved the health system $33,000? Yeah, so on this one account, yes, this is a $33,000 pickup. Pick up. Um, but what we found is that it was, it was a rampant issue with how things are going out the door and turn it out to be about $55 million. So amazing. Right. Okay, here's another one, and I'll speed up a little bit. So um, this is another example on the left uh, is the original claim. On the right is a new corrected claim. So this has to do with pharmacy, uh, pharmacy drug explosion factors. So this has to do with how dosage and units are, are calculated in your charge master. On the left, the specific code J9144 uh, was billed with one unit for $14,000. Great. If you fill up that way, you're going to get paid those four units at $46 a unit, $181. But what we found uh, by doing a little research on that on that J code is that the MUE for that drug is actually 180. And we went back through and verified in the charge master and in the medical record that actually that 180 units was accurate. And it was just the the, the multipliers were just not set up correctly. So again, with this one account by just looking at the units for the claim ended up being uh, going from $181 paid for those drugs to $33,000. So, Lane, is this another recovery example of, you know, roughly $6 million annually for a $500 million health system? Yeah, so, I mean, not really. This is a similar stat system. Um, and among this and other things recovered, this was about a $15 million pickup for, for this specific this specific. Uh, explosion factor issue. Yeah, yeah got yeah. it. Okay, so, great me, setup. I get the point. Uh, maybe maybe yep. another example? Yeah, we'll do one more. Uh, last one. Um, and this one, you know, you, you think is um, is, is fair, fairly simple, but quite honestly, we've, we've run across this, this one uh, at a few places. So um, this is where we were reviewing claims and noticed that we just we just didn't see any anesthesia on, on any any claims. Um, and what we found out is that it was just never, never set up in the CDM and, and never charged. Um, and it just so happened to be that, that their largest commercial payer paid 60% of charges. So obviously, if you don't charge it, you're not going to get paid for it. Um, but by going back, reviewing, again, reviewing records, um, updating charge masters, that type of thing, uh, we're able to go in, find those charges, um, and, get, and get that money reimbursed to the hospital that, that it would do. And, you know, again, having, you know, a, a complete just overall view of everything that goes into, you know, how a claim is, is reimbursed is just, just super, super, super important. So, um, again, so this is just, just a summary, you know, 50, 55 million here, six and a half, you know, at another client, 6.3 um, uh, at, at another hospital system. Um, you know, and again, Andrew mentioned it earlier. Um, we, we did about 200 million in um, last year um, in, in, in true, you know, revenue recovery. And quite honestly, the vast majority of it was, um, you know, was was found to be things that are, are under our control. Um, so just just really really important to, to again to have that that holistic review um, every day of what's going on in your revenue cycle. So let's Andrew. summarize three. Yeah, let's summarize three key components, Lane, of, of a successful underpayments program. Uh, one, uh, identify have experts who understand reimbursement to create necessary variances uh, off the payment payment variance, and then the revenue cycle rule, as you outlined, right? Seventy percent of most of the things that we find across the country come off the variance report. Uh, also, investing in this talent. Recall, hospitals on average lose. Uh, one to three percent of net revenue to commercial payers. So it's really important to invest in building out a, a team. 
um, work the variance report, but again, as Lane, you mentioned, eliminate the false variances to strengthen its capability while also building your black book of rule sets and queries. Take the good work of your critical thinkers and invest in machine learning technology to support your workflow and identify those anomalies. Yeah, and, and Andrew, that, that that last one's a, a great a great point. You know, every everything that that is really identified and found comes from those critical thinkers, um, and take those ideas and and move them forward, um, and then and then almost program them, not not just as a, not just programming technology, which, which which we're doing, but also program it into to all of your analysts so that they can see these anomalies and, and identify them. Um, the second piece is, you know, re recover, right? So it's one thing to uh, it's one thing to identify. Um, it's another thing to uh, to recover altogether. Um, so I'm gonna, oh, yeah. So the second ele element is not to just invest in your talent, as Andrew mentioned, but also to ensure your your underpayment team again is dedicated purely to underpayment. Um, Recall Andrew's previous statement about the amount of lost revenue to commercial payments. It makes sense to invest in a proper program to capture this this, uh, this revenue. As you start to identify and recover underpayments, start grouping and prioritizing your accounts to streamline your efforts. Um, automatically identify and escalate payer issues right when you see them. Stop bleeding, fix that root cause, and solve it where it starts. Um, Resolve, right? So we said, okay, we found the problem. We're, we're going to recover on it. But now, how do we how do we fix it uh, going downstream? So, uh, Andrew, I'm going to take number number three as well, uh, which is resolve. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, resolving underpayments and building out a successful program is all about learning um, where you've been to prevent it from happening going forward. To do that, proper reporting of your trends, issues identified will help you to continue to improve. Um, you can't improve what you don't measure. Once you have proper trending and reports, it's mission critical to take back up, uh, to, to take it back upstream, fix the errors where they're happening. Uh, recall some of this is self-inflicting as, as we mentioned earlier. Not only should you partner with your revenue cycle departments, we should also build relationships with your managed care team and share your trending reports with them to review opportunities uh, and pay your es escalations. Uh, this really helps arm them for uh, you know upcoming contract discussions. Um, so again, this is uh, just to, to add to that a little bit. You know what what this team finds really is you know, is, is not only is it important to you know to collect the cash that you're due, uh, but it's also important to give that feedback back to uh, back to your your managed care team and, and your contracting teams. Uh, you know, a lot of times we, what we may find is it, while it may seem underpaid and paid very low. Um, you know, it, it's actually being paid per, you know, per contract. So even, you know, get, sending that feedback um, back to, uh, you know, the managed care teams and finance and say, hey, um, you know, you're, this is a high volume procedure that you're really just, you're not even being covered at your cost. Uh, those are those are important items that, that need to get back to, you know, to your managed care teams. Um, Lastly, um, just a couple couple case studies. Uh, so we'll go through a few of these case studies and, and try to bring it all home and, and wrap it up and make sure to save time for, for questions. So um, here's an example of a, a Southeastern health system um, that despite working with multiple underpayment vendors, still were experiencing significant leach leakage. Um, they engaged ensemble health partners to correct them, you know, to create a more tactical and, and hands-on approach this client didn't have proper mining of their contracts uh, or zero balance accounts. There was little resolution from uh, from other vendors of trying to fix the root cause. Ensemble Discover communicated uh, some of these weaknesses and processes. Um, you know, we truly wanted to work ourselves out of a job. We leveraged AI-driven automation to eliminate false variances and to fix what some of the other vendors just, just were missing. Um, we utilized some skies and scale to help them during their contract negotiations as well. Um, you know, this resulted in five million net revenue uh, recovered over one million in, in, in previous uh, uncaptured blend transfusion issues. Right, so uh, just just a lot of opportunity around. Um, another one, real quick. Uh, this is a Midwestern hospital system. Um, Twenty million dollars in underpayments identified and recovered. 
Um, and again, this was this was going behind a, another another vendor. Um, this five billion health system in the Midwest um, had an underpayment vendor focused on high value claims and large variances. No focus on zero balance accounts or any of the opportunities um, that we talked about earlier that that you know would never show up on the variance report. Um, contract and, and statute deviations were being missed, and there was just a lack of standardized processes um, that were creating lots of billing errors and just underpaid claims. Um, on some will help create these edits um, to resolve a lot of the incorrect revenue codes we built, prediction rules, uh, leveraging AI automation to prevent these common issues. Um, we also investigated and challenged some, you know, some specific payer contract language um, that just unlocked um, some additional revenue. Um, a strong underpayment program really does have three core components across identification, recovery, and resolving the root cause. Uh, and for a true success, all this happens beyond the variance report. Um, Andrew, um, anything you would like to add, sir? Yeah, no, look, I, I think you're right, Lane. Uh, some of these are examples are, are really important, but um, you know, following the rules of primacy and recency, it's really these three core things that you mentioned, right? Identifying uh, the root cause, uh, making sure you know where these things on and off the variance report uh, are, uh, leveraging those findings to make sure you have your recoveries. And then um, like everything in the revenue cycle is fixing the root cause. So you have to resolve those issues uh, by getting to the root of the issue. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned earlier, that is payer items or opportunities, and then also revenue cycle functions that are off the variance report and partnering upstream the revenue cycle with a uh, multitude of fa uh, facets and, and functions uh, across the system, whether it's the front end, uh, or, or managed care and, and whatnot. So again, identifying, uh, recovering, and resolving are the three elements of a successful program. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Andrew, just I'm kind of scrolling through the, the QA right now, looking at some questions. So um, a couple uh, like like these. Some someone said, "Hey, yeah, one to three percent would be nice, but it's probably ten, and that could absolutely be the case." Um, you know, a lot of 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 where the opportunity lies really depends on number one, what your, um, you know, what, what what type of services does your hospital offer? You know, how complex are you know, are your contracts? Um, again, you know, how how dedicated are you to you know revenue integrity and, and also revenue recovery? So um, when uh, when she mentioned it, probably ten, yeah, that, that absolutely you know could be mm -hmm. true. Um, also, uh, a question in here about the uh, uh, the 636, which and, and I got a empathetic. It's an inpatient specific, which is absolutely true. Um, and again, that's where a lot of the, the issues come from. Is Medicare doesn't even want to see a 636 on an inpatient claim, but guess what? Your your commercial payers, some of them do. Um, so, uh, absolutely agree with you. Uh, agree with you there. Um, and saw a question on here. Is what? what yep. Go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, I was going to read this. This is uh, one of the questions I just pulled out, Lane, and, and maybe you can take this one is, you know, what are some of the largest underpayment opportunities that an in-house team can focus on or, or things that are outside of a, a payer control? Sure. Yeah. So um, to me, really a, a thorough contract review to look for opportunities like we, we've looked at before. So, you know, just, just take a look at your, your high dollar services and, and see where, you know, see where your reimbursement is low. I mean, you don't have to have fancy tools or, or anything like that to, um, to say, hey, you know, this, this doesn't look like it, it, it paid enough. So, you know, what's, what's going on? Um, you know, take a look. I think lesser of it, you know, we see that all the time. Take a look at your lesser of language in your contracts. Um, you know, if you look at some of your line item charges and, and they're below and your charge is, is less than what Medicare pays, then um, there's, you definitely probably have some, you know, some lesser of um, problems going on in, in, your, in your AR. Um, again, my, my favorite tool is a loan reimbursement report. Um, you know, take a look at, at any account that say it's not denied. We're, you know, we, we know there are denied accounts, but look for non-denied accounts. And if it paid less than 10% of charges on your commercial claims, then um, yeah, you know, something's probably wrong. Um, so just those those types of reviews can really, uh, really shed shed light on on some of your your payer behaviors and internal issues that you may have. Thanks, Lane. Here's another one. Uh, we don't have the capital. I'm assuming this is a finance professional because they didn't say money. This is capital. We don't have the capital to invest in technology to support these types of efforts. Can we still build a successful program? 
Uh, absolutely. So, I mean, even like I said, even with minimal data and the right team, uh, meaning the right, you know, qualified people that, that understand understand revenue cycle and understand reimbursement, um, you will absolutely start to see a lift from from these types of reviews. Um, even just one, you know, qualified person will will make a huge difference. Got it. So you're, you're essentially, Lane, saying that having a dedicated team uh, uh, assigned to underpayments um, is, is is mission critical here, right? Absolutely. Here's another question, Lane. How can I assess the quality of my current underpayment program? Sure, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. So um, I think we mentioned a little bit earlier, but it, I think it's all about, it's all about measuring, right? So, um, if, if you have a team that's doing this, is, is one is okay. What are they, what are they finding? Right. So if you go in and look at their trends, and you know, it may be payer X is underpaying here, payer uh, payer Y uh, is doing charge audits that are uh, reducing our stop loss accounts, um, and you may have another you know internal issue. So just just look at see what they're finding. You should see both sides of the spectrum. You should see your payer issues. Um, and then you should see, you know, some of these, some of these issues like we've talked today. Um, secondly is, okay, you, you're finding stuff. Let's see, are, are you collecting it? Um, so, uh, you know, uh, kind of a rule of thumb for, for me is we, we want people to be aggressive. So we want you to go after the hard stuff. Uh, so if, if you're, you know, if you're collecting, you know, 70% of, of what you are identifying as an opportunity, that's, that's pretty good. You're not going to win them all, uh, but we want people to be aggressive. Um, and then lastly is um, what's being fixed, right? So if you have, uh, you know, an analyst that identifies a charge master issue, they should find it one time and then it should be fixed and never found again. Um, so those are, those are some things that I think are really important um, for, for teams like this. Excellent. I see, I see a couple uh, questions I wanted to pull. I, I see one. This is an easy one. I'll take maybe the next uh, one or two. Is this uh, presentation going to be shared? Yes, it, it will be shared. We'll, we'll make sure we push it out. Uh, and here, here's another one more of a, a sort of strategy, strategic question. What trends are you seeing related to underpayments and revenue recovery in 2023? Uh, Lane, I, I got I to jump in on this. I've done far too much research. If, okay. So U.S. healthcare oh, systems, yeah, U.S. healthcare systems waste an estimated like $1 trillion or a 25 Twenty-five percent of total annual healthcare uh, expenditures. That's three point eight billion dollars, right? That's a lot of money. So inaccurate claims, uh, payments equal one hundred and seventy billion dollars of this waste. That's a huge, large potential savings for payers, right? And so uh, this is where it gets really fascinating, and why it's important for you to have an underpayments program. According to Optum, it's estimated that three to seven percent of healthcare claims are inaccurately paid with an average loss of $6 per claim. Hospitals with shrink and reimbursement might disagree with that. And I see a lot of folks in the chat probably yeah, disagreeing with that as well. So if, if payment integrity efforts are improved, healthcare systems could save more than an estimated $300 billion annually. But here's the trend, and this is what's important. Uh, on June of 2019, Optum announced its agreement to acquire uh, Equion for 3.2 billion. Optum utilizes that service to Accurate amounts are being paid, overpayments are identified. Optum believes that underpayment integrity is worth $362 billion in cost savings to them. Uh, in January of 2021, Optum Insight also announced its agreement to acquire Change Healthcare for $12.6 billion. Payment integrity initiatives from Optum are expected to generate nearly $2 billion of incremental savings next year alone. Anthem, similar has also made strategic investments into payment integrity. Their in-house tool allowed them to realize over 300 million in savings in 2020, uh, and payers are investing billions into this. So it's mission critical for health systems to do the same, right? If the insurers are also putting a lot of money on the front end on payment integrity, uh, it would be uh, foolish of us as uh, hospital operators in, in health systems not to invest in our own programs as well. Uh, I see a couple other questions. Yes, uh, folks, the, the deck will be shared. Uh, let's see. Do you have any other questions you want to grab out of this here, Lane? I see a couple more coming through. 
Yeah, I see one. So um, what the question is, what do you mean by stop loss? So um, what a stop loss is in your in your commercial contracts is really a it's, it's a way to capture your, your outlier high dollar claims. Um, and what it does is just gives you additional reimbursement for those for those truly those outlier high um, acuity claims. So the way it works is we'll, we'll do a simple example. So let's say your your contract has a first dollar stop loss, right? So um, and that stop that threshold amount or the outlier amount, let's say, is a hundred thousand dollars. So up until the charges reach one hundred thousand dollars, you're going to get paid your standard contract rate. So that might be a per diem, or it may be uh, you know by DRG, or it could be percent charge. It could be a lot of different things. But up until that that threshold amount, you're going to get you're going to get paid kind of the same thing. Once your charges go over that hundred thousand dollars, what kicks in is an additional outlier payment. Um, and generally, that means it's going to pay you a, you know, instead of a per diem or your DRG, uh, you know, weight and, and rate, it's going to pay you a higher amount. So generally, for first dollar stop loss, that generally is going to pay you at a percent of charge. So instead of getting your per diem or your DRG uh, pricing, you're going to get 60% of that charge. Um, so obviously, the more it goes over that threshold, uh, the higher your, your reimbursement um, continues to grow. Uh, so that's the first dollar. Um, there's different types of, of outliers. Um, obviously, Medicare has, a, has an outlier as well to, to help pay for some of these cases. Um, a good example of where where there's opportunity in outliers, and I see some of this in the chat as well, is with charge audits. So um, a lot of times you see charge audits from payers that are specifically on these stop loss or outlier accounts. Uh, because uh, they're trying to get the, um, the, the the charge amount below the threshold, so there's no additional money due. So definitely an upper, you know, an opportunity uh, there. Uh, the other opportunity on, on stop loss, which I talked a little bit about earlier, is kind of the opposite of that. Is let's say your threshold is $100,000, and you have a, a, a claim that uh, you're going to bill out at $99,999. Um, someone should look at that to ensure that every charge is captured because even that one dollar um, additional charge could have a tremendous impact on on the reimbursement on those claims. Um, so those are you know just, just different ideas on on how to you know accurately and, and again compliantly um, get your claims paid as as they should. Hey, hey, Lane. I saw another question that just popped up, and, and this one's from from Michelle out there. Um, I'll I'll ask the question, but then I'll answer part of it. But I'd love for you to to, to piggyback off this one. So Michelle asks, talent exists within organization. However, C suite believes that work can be spread across other positions with competing responsibilities. Thoughts on demonstrating the value of a dedicated team. So I'll, I'll take maybe the first part, uh, Michelle, and then pass it over to Lane. But I, I think you know some of those factoids that I that I mentioned. About the the healthcare investment, and the billions of dollars that uh, Optum and, and, and United and Anthem have uh, pushed into payment integrity, uh, is a leading indicator that there's a lot of a big investment thesis early on to get this right and, and scrub out. Right? Again, um, Optum believes that they're going to generate nearly two billion of incremental savings next year alone. Right? And so it's important for us as health systems as well to to prioritize some of that spending. But uh, Lane, maybe you can. Um, Share some of your thoughts of how, in your career, you've demonstrated the value of the dedicated team. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the the, the value is in the, the proof, right? So, um, you know, if, if you did take a you know dedicated team, if, if you know if you're trying to show you know an ROI or, or show the value, um, you know, the proof's in the pudding. So, if you you know if you're able to take you know some of those some of those folks that you you know say they they have the ability to do this is you know, let them do it. Even if it's just say, hey, we're going to take these folks for, for three months, right? And we're going to focus them on what we select for these opportunities. And at the end of those three months, um, I could almost guarantee you that the, the ROI will be there. And, and the problem with kind of spreading it thin across other departments is there's, there's always going to be other priorities, always. And, and I say that because I've, you know, I've been there. I've, I've heard that. I've heard we we need you to take your underpayment folks, and uh, we have you know the the denial work queues are overflowing. We have to get we have to get your help there. 
Um, I've, I've been there. Uh, we need somebody to work credits, right? I've, I've been there. Um, so it's, you know, I, we know, we know the opportunities there. I, there's, there's very few, you know, hospitals that I've, I've been in or, or seen that, that don't have some, some type of opportunity. Obviously some have more than others. Um, but you, you never know in, until you do it. So, you know, worst case scenario is, you know, you take those, those handful of folks, let them work for a few months. If, if they come out and say, Hey, this is pretty clean, then, you know, they have possibly, you know, go back to their, their day to day. But I don't, I don't think that will, that will be the case. And once you show the C-suite that here, here's our opportunities, here's what that potential value can be. And then more importantly, is not just what you're maybe recovering, but tell, talk to them about what's going to happen downstream. Yes, you might go back and recover on 10 accounts, but think about the potential hundreds of accounts that are going to happen for the next year, for the next two years, for the next three years that are, um, that are correct um, and getting you paid um, accurately. So those are just a few thoughts on, on maybe ways around that, but I, I know the struggle. I've been there. Yeah, and, and, and maybe what we do is we summarize sort of the, the, the overall takeaway of this deck, and I'll, I'll take a stab at that and have you chime in. Um, I, I do see a, a couple other questions popping in. We'll, we'll, we'll jump up and try to wrap. But again, we talked about the three main components or three main elements of the successful program. Identification, right? Leveraging those seasoned experts who understand reimbursement to create that, that necessary rule set. Building that black book. Of, of details that Lane provided some of those examples on today's call, we'll find you the, the underpayments today that will justify the ROI on dedicating the team to it tomorrow, right? The second thing is making sure that you recover it, not just finding it, but dedicating those resources to specifically to collect on those underpayment accounts, right? There's a lot of questions about how do we justify the ROI of, of a dedicated team? Proof is in the pudding, right? Identify and show some results uh, and build out a business case, right? Most uh, C-suite leaders uh, uh, will understand that situation, complication, resolution. The situation is we have underpayments, complication, we don't have a team, and then you guys show some demonstration of uh, results to a clear resolution of building something. But more importantly is that resolving of the, the root cause, right? Working outside of the payment variance report, going further upstream, sharing feedback with your managed care teams, and fixing the root cause uh, whether it's in billing or coding or whatever area it might be. Providing that direct feedback to your revenue cycle functions allows you to streamline things and fix those errors from happening uh, on a go forward basis. Uh, and maybe, maybe Lane, you want to chime in on, on any other major takeaways for you? Uh, Andrew, I, I think you, I think you covered it well. Um, I, I just, we, we all know there's opportunity out there. Um, you know, revenue cycle is, is so complex and, um, and quite honestly, payers are, are investing in, in this part of it very heavily. Uh, it's not not going to get not going to get any easier. Um, so you know, we just have to stay on top of our game um, and uh, and fight for for those dollars that are due for these hospitals and their and their patients. Look, Lane, I, I appreciate all the time today. Marcus, I appreciate your time today. Uh, look, we're, we're always here to help you all. You all can find us online if you ever need anything else. We're happy to talk shop. Uh, healthcare is a small community, as you all know. Uh, we're here to help each other out. Uh, Becker's team, thank you so much for your time today. And Marcus, back to you. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, that is all the time we have here for today. Uh, I want to thank both of you, Andrew and Lane, for that excellent energetic discussion uh, where you all shared some ways to avoid giving away your shot at a top-notch revenue cycle. We also want to thank Ensemble Health Partners for sponsoring the webinar today. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you at future Becker's Productions.